part of the Country School Association of America's convention this year. We were so elated last year when we got a call from Mary Outlaw that we had been identified as a country school in the area, and we really didn't know anything about the convention or the association at all, but we've come to know that it's a great uh, establishment that we want to continue to be a part of, and we'll just thank you for, thank her for reaching out to us. So this afternoon, um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Joyce Purdue Smith, and I chair a small nonprofit down in Cape Spring, Georgia, and for those of you who don't live here, Cape Spring is about 16 miles from here, and it's known for being a seat of education. And the reason that it's known for being such is that uh, we've discovered, and so many different schools have started there. The Fairview School that was just discovered back in late 2009, 2010. The amazing thing about the project that we're working on is that nobody knew that the Fairview School even existed. And when some of the alum told us that um, the school building, especially the first grade school building was still there, we were just so elated. I think everybody up in Cape Spring ran on the side of the Palak Mountain to see that school. It was just something to behold. Uh, so we were just very, very happy that we are you know, living a day and time to, to garner the support of the community, when we can give uh, the history, capture the history of the school, to make this a true project that we hope one day to restore and to make it for a place for children again. So this is a rendering, a computer rendering, a model of the fair building painted white as it once was, I believe, at least from the remnants that I have seen, with its porch put back on, with its landing, unslumped, upright, picked back up out of the mud, and serving for the next hundred years, serving the community for the next hundred years. So the gray is that retaining wall that we see off of the terrace. But you see, Here's what we have today. It's potentially what we have several hundred thousand dollars in the future. This is the entry side with the porch put back on. And then the site plan. There we have our chimney, the remnant of the Rosenwald building. And what I think we ought to do with it. From a preservation standpoint, I've drawn in two directions. As an architect, I want to put that, I want to rebuild a Rosenwald building. Boy, I can't tell you how much I want to rebuild a Rosenwald building. But as a we preservationist, <laughs> I can't do that as a preservationist because it's it's creating a sort of false history. The building is lost and the building should remain lost. But that doesn't mean that we can't evoke the spirit of the building, the purpose of the building, but in a different function. So what I'm proposing or what I think we ought to do is using the footprint, the floor plan of the Rosenwald building, create a series of gardens that fit that footprint. So you experience the building as though you, you experience going through the building, but not as an architectural thing, but as a landscape element, as a landscape feature. So we have the front porch, and what was called the industrial room, would actually be a structure, a sort of garden, garden shed, potting shed. And then the front, where we have the porch pediment, maybe that's a sort of archway or an architectural element that you walk through, the entrance to the garden. Classroom on the left, classroom behind, and classroom on the back right become row crop gardens, classroom gardens for each of the classrooms. And then where the cloakrooms were, there were these funny little skinny cloakrooms where the trellises would be that sort of, again, evoke that architecture of that of that garden, or of that, sorry, of that building in the garden form. A little bit of parking, sidewalk leads up the historic steps to the restored classroom building community facility with native plantings in between, perhaps an array of, of canopy trees and, and planting new cedars, uh, which is reminiscent of the cedars that were once on the site that the kids would eat their lunch on. 